Thank you so much for joining. Tonight we're doing an artist information session for the 2024 Year of the Dragon RFQ or Request for Qualifications. Um, tonight is Wednesday, February 15th. The application period will end on February 23rd. So um, a little over a week out. Um, and we ask all applicants to submit their materials by that date. We have a jury who will be reviewing applications. So um, thank you so much for your timeliness. Um, tonight, we're gonna cover a couple key materials. I'm gonna try to go pretty quick here, um, covering the Greenway and the Greenway Conservancy, the Greenway in Chinatown, and past public art projects in Chinatown. We'll also talk about the request for qualifications, the timeline and deliverables, um, and have some time at the end for any questions that might come up um, as we go through all of this material um, to hopefully clarify any points of the RFQ that weren't um, obvious. So first of all, about the Greenway, the Rose Kennedy Greenway Conservancy and the Rose Kennedy Greenway um, are the nonprofit and park respectively. Um, the Greenway is the park that took the space that formerly, formerly was the central artery. So in this photo, you can see from the 1950s to 2003, the elevated highway structure that cut through downtown Boston um, was this, at one point in the 50s, kind of a, a engineering miracle. And over time, it became kind of this monstrosity um, in downtown Boston. In 2003, marked the destruction of the highway and the construction of the Big Dig, um, which was a long process, which ultimately buried the highway underground. And um, on top of that highway, now we have the Greenway, a park system that runs from the north end on the right here, all the way down through to Chinatown. Um, so the uh, Greenway itself, sorry, the Conservancy, the Greenway Conservancy is the nonprofit that is responsible responsible for managing this park. Um, the Greenway is full of activity and the Conservancy works with community groups to program our park from cultural events to fitness programs and festivals. The Greenway is hopping with over 400 free events annually. Um, and it also is a beautiful place for people to rest and relax in downtown Boston. The, oops, sorry. Ah, the Greenway Conservancy's public art program has been um, now in its uh, eighth year formal, formerly. Um, this program has seen numerous public art installations and our public art ethos is to always create temporary contemporary works of art in the public realm in order to maintain a dynamic relationship with conversations that are contemporary to our current moment um, and to also support many artists in bringing their ideas into the public realm. The Conservancy's public art team consists of myself, Sheila Novak, Associate Curator of Public Art, um, and Audrey Lopez, Director and Curator of Public Art, who unfortunately could not be with us tonight, um, but would have loved to be here to help share some of this information with you. So for the focus of the request for qualifications, we're really thinking about the Greenway in Chinatown. This is a map of the Greenway. When we were just looking at the aerial photo of the Greenway, um, the vantage point would have been kind of from the top right of this map, um, looking down at the kind of arc of the Greenway. Chinatown uh, abuts the southern edge of the Greenway. So the Greenway in Chinatown consists of um, an two parks, one Mary Suhu Park on the Greenway, which is named after Mary Suhu, a community activist who was um, really considering public space and um, public green space and family needs in Chinatown. Um, it consists of a 45 
foot tall vent structure, which actually serves the interstate below um, and is currently under construction. There are lighting projects and um, other kind of amenities being added to that space, um, which is super exciting and very, very needed. Um, we also anticipate the DOT working on that vent structure in the next few years. So for the purpose of this call, we will not be thinking about Mary Suhu Park due to the numerous var variables happening in Mary Suhu Park. Instead, we're focusing on Auntie Kay and Uncle Frank Chin Park on the Greenway, which is named after very well-known community fig figures, activists, and advocates um, for the Chinatown community. And it can, this part of the park consists of an open plaza, uh, a play area called the Play Cubes, um, a series of canopies of lights, and then what we refer to as the Serpentine Path on the right side, a meandering path through plant elements, um, bamboo, and a water feature of um, a waterfall. So Chin Park on the Greenway is a really important cultural hub for the Chinatown community. Um, Chinatown itself is an incredible uh, heart for AAPI communities in greater New England. Um, and the park, Chin Park is situated by the Chinatown gate. This one acre park um, has elements um, in its architecture and in its designs um, that reflect um, aesthetics from China or from Chinese culture, such as the red bamboo cages um, and the pavers on the ground that are shaped like fans or dragon scales. Um, and it's a really, you know, beautiful space in large part because it's also the primary green space for Chinatown. Chinatown relative to other neighborhoods in the city has a deficiency of green space. There's only 2.2 acres per 1,000 residents compared to the city's average of 7.6 acres per 1,000 re residents. So this green space in Chinatown is highly critical, not only as a place to play and relax, um, but green spaces also have really vital qualities of um, reducing heat and um, improving air quality um, and are associated with health and wellness. Um, and so this uh, park system is a really central and essential corridor for community activities. And we're as a nonprofit, the Conservancy is really proud to support numerous community organizations in activating these spaces throughout the year um, with festivals and events. Um, there's annual festivals such as the Lantern Festival hosted by Chinatown Main Street that happens every year. Um, and then there's spontaneous one-off moments, be it an artist activation or a concert that can happen in these parks as well. Um, if you have any questions as I'm going through this, please feel free to interrupt me or drop a question in the chat. I realize um, I'm going pretty, pretty quickly. Um, we can also discuss anything at the end. Um, but uh, some key past Chinatown public art projects that I'd love to share. Um, these are in reverse chronological order. So starting with the most recent and moving back into history. Um, every year since 2015, the Conservancy has installed a new public art piece in either Mary Suhu or Chin Park. Um, and historically, many of these projects have related to the Chinese Zodiac. So, um, so they're intended to celebrate history and culture, um, as well as uh, the aesthetic and ideas of contemporary artists. Um, and ideally, they have a really kind of distinct lens on um, a, a either moment um, in time or an interpretation of the zodiac animal. So um, you'll see as we kind of move deeper into the history of the program that the zodiac projects become more representational um, and kind of more figurative. Um, versus the more recent pro projects are more conceptual, pulling on the 
characteristics or themes or associations for certain zodiac creatures. So um, Visions Voices, the Year of the Tiger performance series um, was a series filled with many, many local artists who were activating the Year of the Tiger Pavilion by Cheryl Wingsley Wong. Um, in concert, these projects activated the tiger through bringing uh, bravery and self-confidence into Mary Suhu Park through a performance series. Um, unrelated to the Zodiac, we had UN Wu's Lantern Stories in 2020 and in 2022. This project was our last request for qualifications um, that the Greenway produced for the public art program. And um, through a community jury, UN was selected to work with community members to create a light-based public art piece. Um, and these lanterns carried many histories um, from the Transatlantic Railroad and the Chinese Exclusion Act, which is um, depicted in the center of this image to um, cultural stories such as the moon goddess or histories more specific to Chinatown, um, such as the row houses or even um, local artists and their work. Um, so UN's piece has been highly successful and um, uh, is a powerful example of actually what a project of this funding scale could conceivably achieve. Um, Andy Lee's The Herd uh, was created in 2021 um, for the Ox and um, beautifully his messages shared uh, resilience and perseverance, um, which felt really appropriate for 2021 um, as we moved through the COVID pandemic. Ferendi uh, created a mouse with ears and tail in 2020. Um, her interpretation of the mouse was looking at the bone oracle script, which is on the periphery of this circle, um, and how the bone oracle script um, transmuted over time into the character we see today, um, and then animating the character as a mouse. Um, so kind of reconnecting back to that more pictographic uh, imagery of the Oracle script. Um, Elliot Kayser in 2019 created a series of pigs um, called the Year of the Pig. These pigs um, were located throughout the Greenway, um, hoping to draw people into Chinatown and draw Chinatown outside of its borders. Elliot was really thinking about um, the methods of borders and um, also the prosperity associated with the pig um, and the prosperity present in Chinatown. Risa Puno's The Year of the Dog was actually a collaboration with the Asian Community Development Corporation Youth who helped co-create these stories around the dog or around kind of playful um, and joyful relationships um, or to kind of relationships with Chinatown. Um, and these blocks were spinnable blocks um, presented like an abacus. So uh, Risa was really thinking about kind of a playful interpretation of the dog. Chris Templeman's Make and Take was a 3D printed rooster. Um, Chris Templeman actually worked with the MFA to scan a porcelain rooster from their collection um, and then to mass produce miniaturized roosters. Um, and he created kind of a vending machine. So over the course of 2017, this 3D printer vending machine produced 2017 roosters, which then were claimed enthusiastically by members of the community. Monkey See by Don Kennel was actually in a request for proposals process um, for the year of the monkey. This was really early in our public art program and um, the former director and curator of public art, Lucas Cowan, ran that RFP process, which resulted in this um, installation. And the first project ever was Wandering Sheep by Kusoko, 
um, in 2015. And these sheep are actually made out of paper um, and a custom kind of elevated canopy was created, um, painted in a similar color to the existing infrastructure to kind of play off of um, the, the park um, and to place sheep within the park. Um, and there was actually even one singular sheep tucked further back into the park near the waterfall for this installation. So um, for the Year of the Dragon request for qualifications, I'll just run through some of the high level details. Um, first of all, what is a request for qualifications? Um, as opposed to potentially a request for proposals. A request for qualifications is simply just looking for artists or artist groups to indicate that they are interested in a project. We are not asking for a proposal for what project exactly you would make. And actually, if you present a proposal, it likely would um, be perceived kind of negatively by the community who might want to have some input in your thinking. So rather than create a proposal, um, we're asking artists just to kind of indicate their interest um, and apply in a slightly more streamlined process. Um, requests for qualifications are also considered to be best practice um, because although the process of applying is time consuming, it is way less laborious than a proposal process. Um, and many requests for proposal processes yield uh, unpaid time for artists. So rather than go through that, um, we will uh, pay three artists or artist teams to create a proposal and honor their labor and time for that effort. So um, the actual RFQ is on our website. I'm gonna drop uh, in the chat, if you haven't seen it yet, the full RFQ link. Um, so you can go ahead and um, download the PDF. Um, it was released on February 2nd. And um, the whole RFQ describes the call, project background, artist eligibility, and the whole application process. Um, and it is available on the Conservancy website at the bottom. Um, if you scroll down to vending and RFPs, um, you can find it there as well. The timeline currently, uh, we're a little over a week out from the deadline for artist submission, which is at midnight on February 23rd. Um, we're currently working with a community jury, jury to select the date between March and 8th and 18th that we will convene to select the finalists after reviewing all of the applications independently. Um, jurors will be provided a rubric based off of the um, criteria that is listed in the RFQ by which to evaluate the applications. So it should be pretty straightforward if you're wondering how jurors will evaluate, it's all detailed in the RFQ. Um, We'll do some interviews and reference checks as needed before offering the three finalists with their proposals and, a, or their, sorry, their contract for proposals. Um, and again, that is a paid position to create that proposal. Um, by April 7th, everyone will know whether or not they will be moving on to the second round. Um, we'll do a site visit with artists who are invited to create a proposal um, to help make sure everyone has a kind of on the ground understanding of the context of the site um, and the costs uh, of the site visit will be covered by the Conservancy to make sure um, that the proposal is appropriate for the space. And that again, it's not um, unpaid labor by the artists or artist teams. Um, proposals are due by May 7th, which will give the jury just a couple days to review the proposals prior to um, the artist presentations. For the artist presentations, May 9th through 12th, we'll have 25 minute slots for artists or artist teams to present their proposal and have some Q&A with the juror, jurors. So it'll be pretty quick, although hopefully, um, 
you know, everyone will have reviewed the proposal already, so we can get straight into questions. After the presentations, the jury will deliberate and select the finalist. Um, the commissioned artists will be announced by May 16th, which will then give these artists about nine months to actually produce their proposed project. So again, the application materials are um, much less laborious than a proposal, however, still significant. Um, there's the biography, just who you are, artist statement, what your work is. The narrative statement is a little bit more like a statement for intent. Um, why are you interested in this project? Um, whereas the artist statement is a little bit more like, you know, how your artistic practice functions. Um, a professional resume or CV, examples of past work with an image list, and then the two professional references are essential in case uh, the jury is interested in your application as a finalist so that we can confirm that you're um, a responsible human before contracting you. So the selection criteria, this is again all just copy and pasted out of the RFQ. This is the criteria that the jurors will be provided with which to evaluate every application. So looking at artist merit and originality, the feasibility, um, you know, does the artist seem to have a track record or, or if you don't have an experience working in the public art realm, maybe address that in your statement of intent. Do they seem to be capable of carrying this work out? Do they have the resources and tools they need? Um, placemaking, placekeeping, what is their relationship to this community or this place? How has prior work considered site? Um, and then community vi vitality and collaboration. Um, there isn't a requirement for this to have a, an intense community process. However, I think um, knowing that the artwork is created in a way that is intentionally considering the community and the people with whom the artwork will live is a really essential um, component of thinking through this process. Um, so again, the selection process, jurors will review the, RF, uh, the application, select three finalists, the finalists will be prepared or paid for their proposals and then present them to the jury and for kind of the who decides, um, the jury decides. The jury is composed of seven community members, residents, stakeholders, or past Greenway artists. Um, and this committee is the sole deciding body. The Conservancy's role is to facilitate the conversation, to help provide the rubric, to help move the conversation forward, um, and to help suggest ways of working through concerns or challenges if they should arise. Um, so I will be facilitating some of these conversations, but I will not have a voting role, nor will I share my opinion um, about any kind of particular project or eligibility. Okay, great. Now it is time for some questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop, drop them in the chat so that I can answer them. And um, I will aim to keep your, keep your names anonymous. So one question, before the interviews are conducted, is the RFQ selection process anonymous to eliminate any biases outside the evaluation criteria in the event that the jury knows the artist? I will say it is tricky to have a truly anonymous jury because of the fact that part of the application is images of past work. Um, so if someone is familiar with an artist and their work, um, it's it's kind of impossible to hide some of those elements. Um, but I, I do encourage jurors to um, consider their own bias when reviewing applications of artists that they know um, or whose work they are familiar with. And that is just going to always be a tricky thing. Um, we don't have a kind of blind process set up for reviewing the applications. Okay, another question. Uh, 
where do the pieces go after the, they're deinstalled and is it possible that they would be exhibited again? So any kind of artwork that's exhibited on the Greenway, all of our projects are temporary. So once they are deinstalled, all the artwork is owned by the artists. There's no um, process say for um, dictating what happens next to an art project. So if an artist wants to recycle their artwork, they can do that. If an artist wants to reinstall their artwork, they can do that. We will um, work to support any artist in working in whatever way they want to with their piece. The artist maintains ownership over their piece. So ultimately they get the final say. Thank you for all these questions. This is great. For the examples of past work, I understand that collages of several images aren't acceptable, but we could include text on the image itself. Um, so, okay, in your application, I would personally lean towards sharing your image um, of past work and then sharing in your image list any contextual details. Um, so if there is, you know, the basic information of title, year, medium, you, uh, et cetera, but you can also provide some contextual information. If for some reason um, that doesn't make sense, you ultimately can make the decision that you think is best for your work and will represent your work um, as well as possible. Um, but I don't think it is highly advisable to have a bunch of imagery or text on images. Um, is there a preference to focus on objects versus performance and participatory? Great question. Thank you for that. No, there isn't a preference for medium. Um, we have historically had much more um, you know, spatial relationships to our artwork, more um, two-dimensional or three-dimensional presentations. Um, the Year of the Tiger performance series was really our first foray into um, the, you know, more ephemeral presentations. I think that the question that would then come of the work uh, is for $50,000, it's a, it's a substantial budget, how, um, is that distributed? You know, what is going to be created with this funding that feels um, like it's really, you know, worth this large, large funding, which is not to say performance art isn't worth that, um, but is there some kind of, um, you know, element of costuming or of, you know, other details that would help it feel more robust than say um, a concert with one band uh, a few times over the course of the year. Um, those projects could have really different budgets. But if you look at artists like Kara Walker, who's done incredible temporal performance-based pieces, um, we love work that is in the public realm and, and ephemeral, um, but just being sure to articulate, you know, um, a, a large vision for performance or, or participatory work. Um, and I want to just go back for a second, like large, don't feel like it's got to be, you know, to the stars or something. $50,000 is not huge, you know, <laughs> just not a con, not a, uh, anyways, I think, I think you hopefully get what I'm trying to say. Um, submit video instead of images. Yeah, that is a great question. Um, and I really appreciate you asking that. Um, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to just say, keep your total video length under four minutes. Um, so that we're not giving people 40 minutes of videos to watch. Um, so it might need to be kind of a summary, um, perhaps, um, and I know we have um, the option for folks to provide a, um, a narrative that's either written or a video. 
Um, so that would be outside of that, but I'm pretty sure that that minute mark is around four minutes. So it makes sense to me to just say narrative video maximum four minutes in um, examples of past work maximum four minutes um, just to keep it kind of square. Um, yeah, oh, I'm, these are such good questions. Thank you all. Okay. Um, we have one really good question here. Um, do you have to have experience working in the public realm? And the answer is no, you do not have to have experience um, creating work in the public realm. Um, I, articulating your intentions around working in the public realm will be really helpful in your statement of intent, um, which means just you know acknowledging the site, acknowledging the community, and considering how your practice will mesh into those really critical elements. Um, rather than just creating an artwork and setting it in a neighborhood, we're really interested in creating integrated experiences that have a kind of holistic lens on site, community, and creativity. Um, I actually would love to share a, a couple of our past artists that have, um, were, were new artists to the public realm previously. So, um, I'm not confident, but I think uh, Kusoko is not a, a public realm artist. Um, I believe Chris Templeman, this was his first public art um, project. However, I should verify. Elliot Kayser, this was his first public art project. Ferran Dye had not created um, permanent work in the public realm, um, and neither had Andy Lee. Um, Yuen and Cheryl had, however. Um, but for the Visions Voices, you have the Tiger Performance Series, that whole um, creation of a kind of public art project that was a performance series that had a, a concept and some meat around it was um, actually a new way of creating work in the public realm for us. So we're always open to uh, artists and um, our, ourselves exploring new mediums, new ways of making and thinking in the public realm. Okay, I'll be posting Q and A um, by Friday, um, so you can go ahead and email me questions um, that I can post post publicly at that time. After that time, I will not take questions just to try to keep a pretty even playing field for all applicants. Um, so. Um, I would love to support everyone with 100% of my time, but um, in the uh, vision of fairness, we'll go for um, just by Friday. Otherwise, um, also, if you have any feedback or concerns about this process, we welcome, welcome those as well. Um, the link for applications is available here. If you do have any um, concerns or issues with the application format, um, it can be a little bit tricky. So please do um, reach out in that case. Um, and yeah, I would love to, to hear if you have any other questions that have come up or um, are curious about anything else. Okay. Great, well, that concludes our questions for this evening. We will be posting questions with written answers um, online on Friday. Uh, thank you all for your consideration, your time. Really appreciate you being here um, either now on Wednesday evening or later this week. Um, and, you know, find us on the internet. Um, feel free to connect about public art on the Greenway or just all the amazing things happening in the park. Um, okay, thank you, bye.